Hello there, Tristan Ogilvy here alongside Lucy O'Brien. Hello. Here, uh, we're going to have a little chat about uh, Dishonored 2, which we were lucky enough to go and see at Arcane Studios, which is in Lyon. Lyon. Uh, we went and, and saw the game. Unfortunately, we can't show you what we saw uh, because they're holding it, Arcane's holding it for a big uh, gameplay reveal at E3, but we can talk about it. We can. Because uh, we saw a, a stretch of the game featuring uh, both uh, Emily and Corvo, uh, which are the two playable characters mm -hmm. in Dishonored. Worth pointing out that you can only choose once, you can't like switch back and forth between them. Yeah, there's uh, a moment, there's a moment sort of near the beginning of the game which gives you the choice to play as either Emily or Corvo, and you've kind of got to stick. Yeah, you have to stick with one, mm. even though you play through the same game. Mm. Uh, but both have very different skill sets, so it's kind of important to, um, to sort of weigh them up, I yeah. suppose, before you make that decision. Uh, so I suppose the best place to start would be talking about those powers. Mm. Uh, for, we saw mainly in this demo. We mainly saw Emily uh, because obviously she is the new focus. Uh, she's got a very creative, uh, very enjoyable skill set from my perspective. Very yep. useful for stealthy play. Yep. Um, I mean, well, let's start with uh, Far Reach, which was kind of the first power that they highlighted. Uh, kind of, first impressions of it was kind of like Blink, but it's actually a quite a bit more versatile than Blink. Yeah, it's, it's, it looks like Blink when you first look at it, but it's more of a, a grab and pull power. So when it look, whereas, it, you know, Blink was like, okay, I'm going to take you, I'm going to teleport you. This is more like she's grabbing towards something and then pulling herself towards it. So that can obviously be used in many different ways. Mm. Uh, for example, once it's upgraded, you can actually start pulling enemies towards you to choke them out or kill them. And you can also whiplash uh, yeah. like items behind you as well. So in our demo, we saw uh, Emily whiplash like a bottle of explosive mm. dragon oil into into. That's right. Yeah, she's being pursued by a guard, and she just kind of grabbed the thing, pulled it back, and like dodged around it, and yeah, and hit the guard behind her. Yeah. I like to think of it as like one of those kind of sticky hands you get from a toy it's shop. It's exactly like one of those sticky hands. Those sort of Except it gooey... doesn't get all covered in fluff. Oh, hopefully. yeah, yeah. I think you can put it in the washing machine. Right. But after, aside from Far Reach, uh, she's got uh, what, the kind of shadow walk, which kind of has a real... It's, it's uh, hinted at in the, the trailer, actually, so everyone's kind of seen it. But it's kind of gives you kind of a darkness kind of vibe. Yeah. So you're kind of scurrying along with these tendrils that kind of wishbone enemies in, in, into pieces and stuff. Again, cool. again, really useful for stealth. Like, mm. I get, I mean, you can go all out sort of balls to the wall with Emily if you want to, but yeah. she's definitely been more designed for those players who tend to play a little bit more um, uh, passive, Yeah, maybe it is. And, and, and the, the world itself, just to, to, to depart from the powers for a second, the world, uh, Karnaka, the new, the, the new setting, uh, which is completely different from Dunwall, but it also sort of lends itself to stealth because of the sort of procedurally generated kind of silver dust storms that you can kind of use to sort of disguise yourself. And uh, yeah, it's, it, it's a cool setting actually. It's, it's, it's totally different from Dunwall. Yeah, much more vertical. I mean, this, yeah. is, this is more of a sort of Southern European vibe. Yeah, so, sun-kissed. Uh, yeah, very sun-kissed, yeah. um, <laughs> but you know, tall, thin buildings and, and that sort of thing. So it's less kind of those dark alleyways and more like you're skirting across the tops of buildings and, mm. and stuff like that. It, it looks like a really, uh, it's, it's a much prettier yeah. uh, area than Dunwall was. Fewer so, rats? Fewer rats, yeah. but lots more blood flies, which lots we'll get to uh, flies, in a yeah. second. <laughs> um, and so the other sort of uh, couple of big powers for uh, Emily, uh, one being Domino, which we saw uh, demoed uh, in, in the playthrough that we saw, um, which was really cool. I mean, it, and, and can be used, uh, you know, in conjunction with other powers, which, you know, you can sort of have this sort of free form kind of uh, killing. Domino was by far my favorite. Yeah. Like, out of all the powers, even Corvo's upgraded skill set, Domino is still my favorite. So the idea behind Domino is that you can link characters together, like enemies together, and then they share the same fate. So mm. we saw an example when um, she drew a guard, she linked a guard with four other guys, she drew his attention to uh, to like a stun mine, and then he sets it off and they all drop. It's amazing, and it's, it's hilarious. And, and that's it, look, it looks cool too, because it sort of shows you on screen these kind of lines that are linking the, the people that you've dominoed. Yeah. And then you see this kind of like the first guy got hit by the stun uh, mine, 
and then you see this kind of fizzing fuse. Yeah. You're just waiting for the other guys to sort of get hit by it as well. It's, it's really cool. It's amazing. And, and that can also, so one power that we didn't see, which is again very cool sounding, um, is Doppelganger, yeah. which is essentially she can summon a clone of herself, uh, again, that can be upgraded mm -hmm. to become more of a fighting clone, but uh, in its early stages, it's more of a distraction. Um, she links, like, what, what she can do is she can link enemies to the clone and then kill the clone, and then they all drop. Yeah, that's right, you just stab just your own clone. stab your own clone. Um, Emily aside, we also saw Corvo uh, in action. Uh, a lot of his powers were kind of iterations of, of the like Blink and what have you that we've seen before. Yeah, so they've they've really upgraded uh, how, basically how you upgrade Corvo's powers mm. and how, how you upgrade Emily's powers as well. So instead of going just from like, this is going to be a stronger power instead of going from A to B to C. It's more like here's here's your power and here's a whole branching tree um, with all these various ways in which you can upgrade it. So yeah. you can really tailor both Corvo and Emily's powers more to your own sort of play style, which yeah. I think is really cool. Yeah, we saw a little some little tweaks on like the blink. Uh, now you can sort of blink into a sort of kick. You can blink into a kick, <laughs> yeah, which I which I liked. Um, ben Time has had a yeah. really great upgrade as yeah, well. Yeah. So Corvo goes into this room with all these blood flies, uses Ben Time, which has now been upgraded to the point where you can stop time entirely, uh, which, you know, created this amazing tableau mm. of all these just blood flies just stopped. He used Devouring Swarm, um, which sends out all of these rats, and then <laughs> uses his, his upgraded possession to jump into a rat then jump into a blood fly. So as time sped up, he was able to just fly out of there without being seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's really exciting. And again, the potential of combinations uh, for these powers is, is amazing. I like how uh, we're interviewing Harvey Smith, the creative director, and he was talking about how you can, yeah, you can upgrade possession so you can actually possess corpses, yeah. but if you happen to possess a corpse that's like lying face down, then you can't see anything, you just you see the see ground. You can't see anything. Um, but again, huge potential for stealth there. Yeah. The the thing about the blood flies is they're kind of like the sort of, uh, you know, whereas rats in the original game, if you left a, a body around, the rats would turn up and eat it. Now if you leave a body around in Dishonored 2, it breeds more blood flies. So it's, if, you, if you keep sort of stashing bodies everywhere, you'll just end up with this plague of blood flies which I guess you could still use to your advantage when it comes to possession and stuff like that. So it's interesting all the different systems yeah. uh, in, the, in the game. And just to elaborate a little bit more on, on how they've sort of broadened out their systems, they've actually broadened out their choice and consequence uh, system right. as well. So in, in the original Dishonored, it was basically this like background kill count ticker, uh, which which meant you, know, you either got the good ending or the bad ending, however. Yep. Um, and in this instance, like they've really developed that in, in quite a mysterious way. So Harvey Smith didn't go into too much detail uh, about how your decisions affect the game's outcome, but he did say it's more than just a kill count. It's about who you talk to, it's about the decisions you yeah. make uh, with people, uh, it's about the factions you decide to help, it's about the, the factions that you ignore, it's, it's whether you kill someone or decide to leave them alive. I mean, it's really, it's, it's a lot broader this time. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about that, even though we didn't get a huge amount of specifics yeah. from, from Smith in that regard. And I guess when you add that to the fact that there's two playable characters, there's going to be a, quite a lot of replay value for this game, it seems, all the different outcomes and what have you, and, 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 and the, just the unpredictability uh, of the uh, combat encounters and, and yeah. everything else. Uh, so yeah, I mean, all of these sort of like cool new abilities lend to a new style of Dishonored playthrough, which I think is really exciting, which is getting all the enemies to kill one another where you just scurry away scot-free with no blood on your hands uh, with with abilities like domino and yeah. doppelganger for example uh, and position there are so many sort of new ways in which you can basically get enemies to fight one another <laughs> uh, which I love yeah. uh, which I think is really exciting it's going to make for a brand new challenge uh, in, in sort of your second or third Dishonored 2 playthrough. Absolutely. Uh, that was just some very brief uh, Dishonored 2 uh, impressions. There's a full, massive uh, written uh, preview from Lucy on the site, as well as interviews uh, with Harvey Smith. Uh, so check all that out. There'll be more Dishonored at E3 uh, in just a short month's time, uh, which IGN will be all over. But until then, like Lucy. Like the Bloodfly. Uh, yep. <laughs> Like a swarm of blood flies. That's oh, our editorial course. team. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lucy, thank you very much. Thank you, Tristan. Uh, for all things Dishonored 2, stay right here, IGN.